Just like a loudspeaker, a microphone is like a transducer, except it works in the opposite direction. A transducer is essentially a device that converts one type of energy into another type of energy. So instead of changing electric energy to acoustic energy, in microphones it changes acoustic energy into electric energy. After the acoustic energy is converted to electric energy, its energy flows through a circuit as voltage. The device that transduces the energy in the microphone is mounted within the microphone head and is called the element. Each type of mic is named by the type of element used within. There are two main element principles, magnetic induction and variable capacitance. Magnetic induction uses a fixed magnet and a movable diaphragm where a lightweight coil is attached. The coil is placed within the magnetic field, so when it is moved by sound waves hitting it, it is moving through the magnetic field. It then produces a voltage proportional to the count pressure level. These types of mics are commonly referred to as moving coil mics or dynamic mics. Dynamic microphones are easily the most rugged and often the cheapest of all microphone types. The most common and easiest to come by, these microphones are built to withstand harsh treatment, weather conditions, and any other stress generated in the field. Often used for on-site interviews, dynamic microphones are able to pick up a wide range of audio signals, including loud or extreme sounds, without damaging the microphone itself. Dynamic mics require no internal power source and are often equipped with a pop filter, which reduces breath pops to produce clear, undistorted sound. Most of these microphones are omnidirectional, allowing them to pick up audio signals from their surroundings, as well as the talent using the mics. Inside a dynamic microphone, there are actually very few pieces. Effective and simple, dynamic microphones generate audio signals by having an internal magnet generate a magnetic field, which surrounds a small coil. This coil vibrates in response to sound stimulus, and its movements produce the end sound signal. Because of this design, no internal power is required, and dynamic microphones can be built toughly without compromising their purpose. Another type of microphone that uses the same principles of magnetic induction is the ribbon microphone. Instead of a coil that's in movement, it uses a metal ribbon. When sound waves are produced, they hit the ribbon which moves within the magnetic field to produce voltage. The one type of ribbon mic being shown here is a vertical ribbon mic, but newer models can come horizontally made. Ribbon mics usually catch sound bi-directionally. One of the major reasons ribbon mics are admired throughout are for their ability to pick up low ends exquisitely well. According to many accounts from when ribbon mics were first introduced, these mics made them sound godlike. They have an okay capability of picking up high frequencies which can be used to your advantage if you want to have a mellow sound. But of course, with new technology comes new boundaries, and newer ribbon mics can pick up higher frequencies better. The downside of these mics is their sensitivity. They pick up wind very easily and are not suitable for outside use unless properly shielded. Also, these mics can sometimes give you a loud, booming bass due to the accenting lows. There are types of ribbon microphones that use an amplifier system, which require phantom power. Phantom power is, simply put, a way to power an amplifier by sending voltage along the audio cable. The advantage of this type of ribbon mic is a higher output and sensitivity, a wider and flat frequency response, and also the ability to handle higher sound levels before they distort. Mics that use the magnetic induction principle are called dynamic microphones. This includes the moving coil and ribbon mic. However, the moving coil mic is referred to as the dynamic mic, and the ribbon as the ribbon. The next principle of microphone elements is variable capacitance, which transduces energy using voltage variations instead of a magnetic field. These types of microphones are called capacitor mics, but old lingo holds on through to modern day and this mic is incorrectly referred to as a condenser mic. This type of microphone consists of two plates with a small space between them. The front plate is created to be a thin, metallized plastic diaphragm, and it's the only moving part in the mic. The back plate is fixed into place and is obviously thicker. 
Together, both of these plates form what is called a capacitor, which is a device that is capable of holding an electric charge. The sound waves produced move the diaphragm back and forth from the back plate. This causes the capacitance to change and causes a voltage change, varying the signal. Capacitor microphones need a power source to operate. Batteries can be contained inside the mic or from an external source, or phantom power. External power eliminates the need for batteries and can come from consoles, studio microphone input circuits, or portable units. These types of mics reproduce clear and detailed sounds and they are the choice among many professional mics. Capacitor mics have a high sensitivity which makes them the preferred choice for long distance miking. Generally, the pickup patterns of microphones fall into three categories, named for their polar patterns, or two-dimensional representations. The first of these is the omnidirectional pattern, which surrounds the entire microphone equally in all directions. The second pattern is the unidirectional pattern, which picks up audio signals in front of the microphone head only. The third pattern is also unidirectional, but is much more focused and has a further reach than the other unidirectional mics. The most common unidirectional mics are also known as cardioid mics because of the heart-shaped polar pattern they feature. More specific unidirectional mics are known as hypercardioid or supercardioid mics. These microphones are able to capture much more specific sounds at greater distances than standard cardioid mics. However, they are unable to pick up sounds which surround the microphones and are focused only on sounds generated directly in front of it. Because of their unique design, these microphones are often sensitive to sounds generated directly behind the mic. The types of microphones you decide to use are theoretically up to you and depend on the type of sound quality you want to reproduce from your recordings. If you want your movies or films to sound warm, then you might want a ribbon mic for some situations. But if you are going to shoot outside, you might want to choose a condenser, and possibly use a shotgun condenser mic. However, if you cannot afford all of these mics to use in the many different varieties that they could be used for, then you might just have to settle with a simple dynamic mic. They are cheaper and more durable, and in most cases, they can carry a message without any hindrance to worry about. Just with those types of mics, you can lose a bit of quality. Think ahead to manage what you need to know, why you need it, and whether or not if you do need it. Everything will always depend on the situation. Also, there are not only three types of microphones. There are many more types coming out to this day. Do your research before you delve into a very important project so you know what you are dealing with and what resources you should invest in to help aid you in your recordings.